good day. Today is a good day. Today is, it says in the Bible that today is the day of salvation. Um, I want to offer that salvation to anyone who may be struggling with um, narcotics, alcohol, cigarettes, um, nicotine, any kind of uh, bondage. Um, this, what you're looking at on here is, is a gospel track, what they call a gospel track. Um, I like to pass these out to people on the streets, in the marketplace, whenever I feel led. I'll pass these out to people. Um, I just feel the Lord wanted me to, to put this on audio, on an audio tape for you, um, specifically, especially for you who is listening to this video, who has been struggling with alcohol or drugs or um, even in the past, maybe you don't use alcohol or drugs anymore, but um, there may be something in here that, that may speak to your heart. Uh, that's why I'm doing this. So we'll go ahead and get started. It says here in the beginning, and when I open up this track, it says uh, it's labeled a prosperous boy. My life started in 1928, one cold day on December 28th. That was a year of prosperity in America just before the 29 crash. I grew up in a poor family financially, but a family of high morals with no drinking, dancing, or anything unclean. My daddy was a hard worker who had some small produce trucks. Every summer I was on one of them learning how to sell produce and make money. The desire to work and make money always had me. When I was 11 years old, I had a rose and wagon, or I'm sorry, a horse and wagon, and was pedaling from house to house in Houston. I saved every time, every dime, and when I was 17, I left home with a good truck that was paid for. Two years later, I got my second truck. Then my trouble started. A prisoner of the devil. Since the age of 17, I had smoked marijuana, but not to excess. At 18, I took a few shots of dope, but this didn't satisfy me. I wanted some trucks, a pocket full of money, and a gang of hoodlum friends. Never did I want to be chained to some habit. At the age of 20, heroin took her awful hold, and all I could do was not enough to shake it. I quit, left town, prayed, and asked preachers to pray for me, but I was chained to the devil. The years from 20 to 25 were the most horrible years of existence I had ever known or read about. My family was gone, the trucks were gone, and friends were gone. What was once a good kid was now a hopeless drug addict. After being in jail for vagrancy, theft, felony, theft, burglary, and possession of heroin, I decided to take a cure. I spent 40 days in a hospital, however, two days after I was out, I had a needle in my arm. There was no cure. The, the federal man said, lady, forget this boy. There's no hope for him. Once a drug addict, always a drug addict. He is chained. A problem to everyone. The city I lived in never wanted me. Many times some policemen would say, Jack, go somewhere else. I was often in trouble or in jail for robbing, stealing, and writing bad checks. I was a real, I was a real problem to everyone. Everyone, that was a real problem to everyone. One day, my daughter came into the house and told my mother that the little girl next door could not play with her anymore because her daddy was a dope fiend. Yes, no man lives to himself or dies to himself.
I decided that maybe the U.S. Army could help me. After nearly one year with only 83 good days spent in service, I was discharged with, a, with an undesirable discharge. Written across the bottom of the discharge were the words, reason for discharge, narcotic. The army took me in handcuffs to a J.C. Penney store, bought me a suit of clothes, gave me a train ticket and sent me back to Texas, pardoned by Jesus Christ. When I was in jail and the army, when I was in jail and the army stockade, I would read the Bible. Many times I went to a chaplain or preacher for help. I attended a Catholic church and later joined a Baptist church. I tried everything I knew. I prayed every day for God to help me be free from this habit. When I moved from Texas to California, my mother wrote a letter to me telling of a friend who had been saved and was now a pastor of the First Baptist Church of Cyprus, California. Out of curiosity, I went to this church. This pastor told me what God had done for him. I went regularly for a month to see if God would or could do the same for me. On October 12, 1953, I went down to the altar and on my knees I asked Christ to save me from drugs, death, and hell. I was not made perfect, but that day my load of sin was lifted and a desire was put in my heart to live for Jesus, a preacher of the gospel. I had only been saved about three weeks when I knew that God wanted me to preach. <laughs> I walked down the same aisle where I was saved and surrendered my life to Jesus for service. For 22 years, I've tried to preach and live for him. It has not been a bed of roses, nor has it been glamorous. The rocks in my way have been many, but God has brought me on. This same thing can happen to you if you are willing to let Jesus Christ take over your life, which you have wrecked. And then here on the back of the um, the track, it says, God's simple plan of salvation. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 reads, for, I, for all have sinned, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes on him, in him, should not perish but have everlasting life. Titus 3, 5 says, But not by works of righteousness, Again, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saves us. Luke 13, 3. Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts sixteen thirty one, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. John 1 12 but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name 2nd Corinthians five seventeen. therefore if any man be in Christ he is a new create creature all things are passed away behold all things are become new if after you heard this um, this message this tract, um, I want to I want to invite you into um, a relationship with Jesus. It's a very serious decision. Um, you could be listening to this uh, to this audio track in your car right now, and you may have just took a a shot of heroin, and you're and you're nodding out, and you can hear me. You can hear me talking. I want to let you know that God has a plan and a purpose for your life he he loves you if anybody loves you it's Jesus he loves you very much he can wake you up out of the stupor and give you a life 
hope in the future. Just call on his name right now. Just say, Jesus, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Just say in your mind, you don't. if you can't talk, you're, you're too high to talk. Just say, just speak in your mind. Say, say, God, I want to be made free from sin. I want to be a servant of righteousness. Take these desires from my, from my heart to use drugs and alcohol. Take it away from me. Give me this life that, that this man's talking about. Give me this life that you're talk, that you talk about in your body in the Bible. Set me free, God. Come into my heart, Lord, Lord. Remove this anger from my from me. Give me that new heart that you talk about, the heart of flesh. Save me, Lord. Save me, God. Save me. Help me. If you've prayed that prayer, I believe that God heard you and is going to give you grace to get through whatever you're going through. Pray. Ask Him right now. Say, forgive me of my sins, God. Forgive me for being... For, for being the way I've been. Teach me how to live a life that's pleasing unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. If, if you'd like help, um, I want to help you. We want to help you. Or the ministry wants to help you. Um, we have resources. We, we can pray for you. Um, we want to love you and, and help you learn um, that you don't need, need all that stuff. Please, please reach out to us. Our website is pleasedisciplemecom Please disciple me.com. Or you can go to God's Chosen Street Ministry.com. God's Chosen Street Ministry.com. Or please disciple me.com. We love you and we're praying for you. In Jesus' name. <laughs>